Welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. All right, so it's the first here, but as you can see, my watch still reads the 31st. I'll tell you why. I walked out of the door, some rain hit my watch, and only after that did I realize I needed to adjust the date and uh, didn't want to get into the crown in the rain. So, you know, could the Rolex take it? I'm sure it could, but would I think about water damage for days after that and look for condensation? Probably. So what I'm going to do is just wait till I get home, let the wash dry, and then change the date. But I got to say, changing the date on this watch is really easy. Same thing with the Explorer 2. You just pop it out to the first position and move the hour hand around pretty much uh, two times, two rotations, two complete rotations, and that's it. And it doesn't hack the second hand, doesn't mess up the time, it's just great. I mean, if all watches worked like that, had that function, that would just be great. Now, of course, other watches have ways to deal with the date, the quick set, so that's an easy option as well. All right, guys, Yamada Denki. I'm looking for the watches. I'm just actually killing some time. We're going to my daughter's school today to see her English lesson, which will be kind of cool. Um, so I'm looking for the watches. I'm sure they won't have anything good, but let's see what kind of time pieces Yamada Denki has. All right, no watches. Oh well. And this is the closest thing. This is all the time-related stuff they've got. All right, guys, I just stumbled upon this used pre-owned shop behind me, and they have a few watches. Let's check them out. All right, on the left there is a tag hour. It looks like a chronograph in the middle of Zen. That's a GMT watch. We'll take a look at that later. On the left, that's a small dive watch, a small Omega 36 millimeter. In the middle, the best thing they had, the Oris dive watch. You can see the price. It says analog watch, stainless steel, six-month warranty. Same thing, six month warranty, analog, both come with box. All right guys, so after the English lesson, I went back to this secondhand store and I tried on the Sen and the Oris. Now the Sen didn't do anything for me. It's a little too big and just the brand doesn't do anything for me. I don't know much about Zen um, and I don't really wanna know anything about Zen. Uh, but but the Oris was uh, kind of nice and I gotta say I was tempted I was well not very tempted but I love the dial color it was really uh, thin um, the height was pretty minimal and yeah it was a really cool watch uh, I gotta think about it you'll see it in a minute but impressions uh, it, it, it felt lower quality than, say, a Rolex. Okay, that's no surprise, but it, it was noticeable. The wine felt zippy like an ETA movement, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's an ETA movement in there. Not a big deal, but uh, do I really need another ETA movement? Um, yeah, the, the screw-down crown was all right. Uh, no crown guards, that's kind of nice. And uh, the bezel was, uh, the bezel, the bezel, it it had a cheap click to it, but there wasn't a lot of play. It, it's hard to explain, it just felt like a cheap click, if that makes any sense. Um, look, I'm, I'm, I gotta stay away from pieces like that because I'll wear them for a week and then think to myself, why did I get this thing? This was, you know, $800. Why did I spend that kind of money on this thing? Uh, it would go right next to the Seiko 5s and the Seiko Speed Timer and the Vostoks and and uh, I would never wear it again. And I really would probably have to sell that watch. Could I get uh, what I paid for? For it if I were to get it uh, probably but I don't know um, maybe not maybe not um, I think at best I could break even and 
that would give me some experience with the Aorus, but I'm okay. I think I'm, I think I'm okay. All right, the Zen GMT, you can see the GMT in the middle there. Date at four o'clock, it's got a timing bezel, which is kind of nice, 12369 dial. It's a big watch, not my style, but seems quality on the wrist. Not a fan of the NATO strap. It was clean, but it was clearly used. It's a Zen strap, you can see the buckle there. It's not a cheap watch, it's over $1,000. And for that price, I mean, it doesn't have the punch of you know one of these real high-end brands, so I don't think I'd put my money in it, but it is quality, it looks quality, it feels quality, I'm sure it is. I think it's made in Germany, they make great stuff there. Notice this device on the side of the case, and no clue what it does, but I'm very curious, so if you know, let me know what that does. It looks like a sensor of some sort. All right, and the Oris. So it's a very thin watch. It's got Oris on the crown, a very big crown, really comfortable to wind. And beautiful dial of that blue. The center is slightly darker. It's got these like 70s 12369 numerals. The date at the six o'clock. I like the way the minute hand stretches out past the minute markers, which are sort of pulled in towards the center of the watch. Nice, comfortable bracelet. It's a big watch. I want to guess it's 42 millimeters. Good looking hands. I like both the minute hand, the hour hand, the second hand. Retro looking acrylic crystal. It's a good looking watch. I mean, just doing this voiceover, I'm, I'm sort of falling for it all over again. What do you guys think? At that price, 800 USD. Is this worth it? All right, well, what did I get? I actually got a 300 yen metronome, one of those old timey metronomes that you know, go back and forth, click, 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 not a digital one. So three bucks. And uh, I'll use that to play ukulele with my daughter, maybe do some guitar practice with it. All right, gonna have some Indian food now. All right, guys, I was thinking about it in that Indian restaurant and a lack of choice can make you do some uh, dumb things, perhaps make some bad purchases. You know, if you go to a place and there's one dive watch there and you like dive watches and you like the dial, uh, you could be tempted. I was kind of tempted. I mean, not seriously tempted. I'm blowing it out of proportion to make you guys think that I actually, you know, was really contemplating getting that Oris, but I wouldn't have looked twice at that, at that Oris if, uh, if I had been in Nakano. Because there'd be other things I would have been more interested in, but because I like dive watches and it did have a cool dial, I contemplated it when I never would have uh, otherwise. And so it's gotta be tough watch shopping when there's not much of a selection. You know, because you start looking at what you can get, not what you really want. Whereas in Nakano, I mean, there's every watch you can imagine. They've got what you want somewhere there. And so you don't settle at all. You find what you want and and you uh, you think about it. And it's not like, well, do I want this? It's, it's, I want this, let's find it. There it is, let's think about it. Let's decide between this one and that one. And I think it makes for a safer buying experience. You're less likely to uh, regret your purchase because it's not born out of what's available. It's born more out of what you want. So that's one thing I learned today. Okay, so let's do it. 